Hey everyone, welcome to our AI Builder series where we interview innovators building AI powered applications on Snowflake. Today, I'm joined by Srini Gorty, CEO of Leave Metrics. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. And to get things started, we'd love for you to introduce yourself, tell me a little bit about you, and then tell me a little about the story behind uh, Leap Metrics. Certainly. My name is Srini Gorty. I'm the founder and CEO of Leap Metrics. We are a healthcare, next generation healthcare platform that delivers a fully integrated data management, analytics, and care management solutions to help folks with chronic conditions. 5% you know, of our population consumes 50% of our national health expenditure. That's set to get to like $7.2 trillion by 2031, right? These are folks with chronic conditions, such as autism or developmental disabilities, right? In a lot of these conditions, you cannot cure, you need to manage them. And our software really helps our providers and payers manage care for these individuals. This whole healthcare journey started for me. I've been, by the way, a serial entrepreneur for 25 years now. This is the sixth startup I've been involved with. It's by far the most fulfilling one, I want to say. Um, and the whole journey started with uh, a loved one experiencing uh, a lot of health uh, challenges. And she was struggling with bouts of stomach pain for an entire year. And we bounced from the PCP to the GI to the ER multiple times. And they weren't connecting the dots. And that caused a lot of angst for us. And at the end of it, it turned out to be an inflamed appendix and they had to perform surgery. And then I looked back on it and I'm like, why didn't they connect the dots? And they could have prevented this from happening. And that's when I decided I want to jump into healthcare and do something about it. That's how this whole journey started for us. Yeah, I know that's an amazing story. And it's really cool because healthcare has been ready for disruption on the data space for a long time, right? Anybody that's been in the healthcare space just knows how messy it is yep. to get uh, health records uh, across, to get a full patient view and a 360 yep. and get a lot more recommendation systems. I love the fact that this is not your first time building companies, especially not around data. So tell me, what made this round interesting for you to start using Snowflake to build this application? Yeah, so over the years, you know, you bring up a great point, right? So the whole technology has evolved. Initially, we were using relational databases to build our data warehouses. You had DBAs managing all these different databases and you had to duplicate and replicate all this data. And then we moved to Hadoop type of environment where you had teams managing infrastructure, right? And the, it was very expensive, hard to stand up, hard to maintain. And with one of our previous ventures, that was a platform we were on. And I'm like, this is too complex. I want to focus on building the solutions and not on managing this whole infrastructure, right? And so we were looking for a solution that was compliant because healthcare is all about compliance. So we needed it to be SOC 2 type 2 compliant to support multi-tenancy because we are a SaaS product, right? So we have multiple customers storing their data in our platform. We want to be able to share that data back with them in a very secure way. And with Snowflake, with their data sharing, it makes it a lot easier. And then we want security at the lowest level, at the row level, and Snowflake natively supports that with pretty much zero maintenance. So we don't have a big team of DBAs managing all this for us. And what's really cool about Snowflake is we're able to ingest all this data in various formats, right? And store it in Snowflake and let it process it and make the tables available to us. So we are not having to do ETLs to process all the data and store it in Snowflake, only then to be able to use the data. Instead, right from the get-go, I can load millions of records into Snowflake storage, transform it into tables and use it. We are also a microservices platform with a lot of event streams and we needed a platform that would ingest all that natively, and Snowflake gave us that. Yeah, I think you've talked about it, which is like flexibility of architecture, tons of data coming into the platform, and the ability to manage that with very detailed security to meet all the security and compliance uh, requirements that you need. Right. I'd love to see how this is actually architected, and would yeah. love if you could walk me through the architecture of the platform. Certainly, yeah. So the architecture looks like this. So on the left-hand side, you see a set of sample data sources. Think of the member as the center of the universe, right? So member's health doesn't just depend on the clinical aspects. It also depends on their social determinants of health, which is do they have food insecurity? Do they have transportation, housing? Because if a patient goes to the doctor and says, I have high blood pressure, they may try to give him medicine. He'll be like, but I don't have food to eat. So even if you give me this medicine, it's not going to help, right? So it is important to capture all of these other elements. 
So we capture data from health information exchanges. Every state has one, where if someone goes to the hospital, the data ends up in the HIE. We pull data from that. There are SDOH networks, which give data about transportation and food insecurity, things like that. ER visits and so on. And any encounter any patient has goes into an EHR. So our customer's EHR houses that information. We pull data from that. And here are the types of data sets we gather. It's demographic data, your claims data, labs, and so on. Everything that's pertinent to the member, right? They're the center of the universe and you have all these satellites around. And all of that data comes in and through our data orchestration platform. And we have our microservices architecture, which converts all of that into data event streams. And all that data through Snowflake connectors ends up in what we call our data pod. And for us, the pod is like the Hadoop story I was sharing you with you earlier, right? It's all in one. It takes care of the raw data and the data lake, and then builds our data warehouse around it, and builds marts for special, specific use cases, right? And even if someone does something in our application, all that data flows into Snowflake, into our data pod, so that we can generate insights from it. So on the right-hand side of this diagram, you'd see various use cases. One is AI, powering all the data we have will get converted into AI insights that power workflows in the application. Traditional systems do it the reverse way, where gen application generates data, goes into a report or into some analytics dashboard. We are actually taking the data in real time, sending it to Snowflake, and powering all the insights from there into the application. That's a huge difference for us. And then we power all the analytics, and we are trying to leverage Cortex for both AI and ML functionality on the other side. And while we do all of this, we want to be able to share this data with our customers. We are a multi-tenant platform. So we want to, our customers to have access to the data. If they want to build connected apps with that data, they can go do that all day, right? We don't want to lock all that in our application. Instead, we want to expose it to them. And this is how we achieve that. Yeah, and so it sounds like Snowflake has made your data world a lot easier, both for predictive as well as uh, descriptive uh, data and metrics and all that kind of stuff. How does it actually then all of this stuff surface to the end user? We'd love to see actually a demo of the application. I'd love to show you that. So let's jump into, into the application. So let's start with the quality measurement, right? CMS publishes these quality measures. These are like pages of specifications that talk about how many times you need to check blood pressure for someone with high BP or what types of immunizations you need to give a child, right? All of those measures have to be tracked on an ongoing basis. And what you're looking at here is a screen for what a measure called CIS, which is childhood immunization measure. And everything you see here is powered by Snowflake under the hood. We consolidate all the data and show them what's your to total population like, and then which members are meeting the criteria and which members are not meeting the criteria, like a DTaP or IPV vaccine and so on. And all of this data can be exported, right? And we not only tell them who meets the criteria and who doesn't meet the criteria, we also give them an explanation as to why they met or did not meet the criteria. And using AI, we generate recommendations. What you see here on the screen is taking this whole specification from CMS, taking all the facts we gather, matching them up. It's almost like an expert system that's telling them, here is what you need to do to stay compliant. So you're not waiting for somebody to end up in the ER. You're proactively managing what needs to happen for them. So, and that's how the quality measurement happens. And all of this is done in the application through AI. Here is our dashboard. A care man Ashley Newman is a care manager. They log in. They see their contact summary here where it tells them for this acuity tier, this is a high risk individual. That's again done through algorithms. Uh, it, it puts them in different risk buckets. And you need to have five contacts. They only had one, so this member is at risk. That's a care gap. You need to call them, contact them, make sure they're okay, right? And then you have your co-pilot. So the co-pilot will help a care manager ask questions of the data. So for instance, they can say, what is the Medicaid ID for Samuel Evans? And it would then go explore the data, bring the response back, right? And it also understands the context of where you are throughout the application. So in this case, I guess there is no Medicaid ID for this person. But if I want to say, get me a count of members by ethnicity, it would go again, do the same thing, go explore the data, right? It's more of converting the text to SQL and then going and running the query, bringing it back, 
and then translating it into text that actually uh, the user can understand. It gave me a bro breakdown of all of that. I can then go on to search for a patient. Let's look for um, a patient here, Jeffrey Smith. When I do that, the AI engine kind of knows that I'm navigating through the application. I'm looking at care plans. And then it gives me a list of choices, context-sensitive choices. And I can say, show me all the active care plans. And I can click on any of these care plans and it display the care plans here for me. So in this case, this member has three needs. That they need therapy, they need medication management, and diabetes management. I can then ask the AI engine to take this member's profile, which includes all of their diagnoses, their risk level, and all the screening data that we have, send it to AI, and ask it to generate certain needs, right? So what am I missing? What should I be watching out for? And it generates it for the member. So I click on generate needs, and it gives me a list of these needs that I can add to, again, it says for this patient, you know, living activities, behavioral therapy, these are some of the things you need to be looking out for, right? And it makes it very seamless, it's a seamless experience for the care manager. Instead of jumping around, you can go to ChatGPT and put in information there because it's PHI. And this co-pilot knows about which context you're in, knows about your member, and gives you appropriate guidance. Yep, and all of this is also converted into certain alerts, right? Any care gaps are highlighted as alerts, so the users can either contact the member or conduct another screening to make sure they're okay and also creates all sorts of tasks for the member, right? So if I scroll down further, you see all the care gaps are identified here, and a list of tasks are created for the user, and we use machine learning to score each of these tasks. So if I'm a care manager, I'm managing for 300 members, it's very difficult to manage all the tasks around all these members. It's just like our to-do list, right? So we take a lot of different dimensions into account and score each one of these tasks so they figure out if someone got hospitalized, you need to prioritize that task higher, right? We present all those scores to them. Yeah, no, I think this is really cool. I think what I really like about all this stuff is you're doing descriptive analytics at scale. You're doing predictive to become prescriptive, right? You're helping the caretaker do a lot of uh, activation in a prioritized mm -hmm. way. And then you also have generative with this uh, analytics and natural language, which makes it really easy to sort of like bring all of this together in a single and unified experience. I'm glad that Snowflake can enable that for you. So if we had to summarize, like, what are all the AI functionality that's currently built into the platform? And how is Snowflake going to help you evolve that uh, over time? Great question. Let me walk you through that. So let's look at our um, AI co-pilot, which we call Vita, and how it works, right? So the co-pilot has an intent engine. So as users ask questions, we detect the intent behind the question. Are they asking a general question, a clinical question? Are they doing sentiment analysis? Or are they trying to ask a specific quality measure related question? We take that and our intent engine then figures out what is the fulfillment engine that can serve this, this particular request. And these can be like decision support questions, which could, which could be score this task for me, right? Or it could be to generate a content. Well, I have a new member that just joined this program. I need to send them a welcome letter. How do I write the letter? Well, if you have care managers that are new to the program, they don't know how to do it. Not only that, you want a standardized process across the whole system. You can have AI generate that letter, personalized letter for them. And it has PHI, so you can't just use ChatGPT. You got to use a tool like this. And then data exploration, which we covered, which is text to SQL, and then framing up the response, presenting it back to the user. Then you can use it for training, where how do you train new users where they're trying to navigate through the system? Where can I go find the Medicaid ID? Where do I look for the diagnosis? All that is offered by the AI engine, right? And all the alerts for care gaps, we can generate using AI and present that back. And report generation and navigation can also be supported through this. And all this can be done through Cortex and Snowpark, right? So if you have ML models, we want to spin up containers in Snowpark and run those models. The scoring algorithm is one example. Or assigning members to care managers optimally. If I'm a care manager, I have 300 members. Right? You have 1,000 members to assign across all these care managers. How do you optimally do that? It could be by gender, it could be by proximity, and all of those types of things. And we can use Snowpark to run those algorithms and use Cortex for all of the other LLM type of functionality. Srini, it was a pleasure to have you here today. It was so exciting to learn about all these different topics from healthcare, your background as a founder. How can people learn more about Leap Metrics uh, if they want to? 
Thanks for having me. And people can learn more about us uh, by going to our website at leapmetrics.io. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Make sure to check out the Leap Metrics website. And then, of course, stay tuned for other episodes where we have more AI builders come and tell us the story of how they're using Snowflake to build AI-powered applications.